And so it was that the conflict between the New Canaanites and the White Legs was finally resolved. The Courier's involvement had tipped the scale, shifting the fragile balance of power. Demoralized by the dead horse and Sorrow's attack, the Courier and Joshua Graham led against them. The White Legs retreated to Great Salt Lake. Their days were numbered. Word soon reached the 80s tribe that the White Leg's spirit was broken. Their war chief a dim shadow of his former self. By year's end, the 80s would overrun the White Leg's camps, scattering the tribe to the winds and claiming the Great Salt Lake for its own. The Sorrows fought beside Joshua Graham and the dead horses, eradicating the threat the White Legs posed to Zion. Seeing the courier convince Joshua Graham to spare salt upon wounds, the Sorrows learned that retribution could be tempered by mercy. Though he despaired at the Sorrows' loss of innocence, Daniel took some small consolation in the courier's lesson and prayed it would take root. Having helped eradicate the White Legs from Zion, the Dead Horses returned to Dead Horse Point in triumph. They remained neutral toward the Sorrows, but as years went on, there were periods of competitive friction, even violence between the tribes. The new Canaanites, Daniel especially, intervened regularly as mediators, but found it difficult to reconcile the tribe's conflicts. The defeat of the White Legs and Zion marked a turning point in the fortunes of the Happy Trails Caravan Company. Every two months, the caravan met with the new Canaanites in Zion Valley to trade. Happy Trails soon returned to prosperity. The vigilance of the sorrows and dead horses in defending southwestern Utah, initially startling to Happy Trails caravans, soon proved a blessing. The tribes united against the 80s, driving them back from Highway 50 and thus opening yet another trading route for Happy Trails caravans. Follows Chalk took the courier's words to heart and decided the big cities of the Mojave Wasteland and NCR were best left unexplored. Though he sometimes dreamed of distant lands, he continued to support his family at Dead Horse Point, and eventually, his wanderlust faded. Waking Cloud was distraught when she learned of her husband's death but took comfort from her tribe and the compassion of the new Canaanites. She forgave Daniel for having concealed her husband's fate from her and learned to accept his fate. When her grief faded, she took a husband from the dead horse tribe. At her bidding, he stayed close to home. The threat of the white legs ended. Joshua Graham helped the sorrows and dead horses tend to their fallen comrades and secure Zion. The Courier's words had stayed Joshua's wrath in his darkest hour, and in sparing salt upon wounds, he was changed. While he continued to advocate militant opposition to the enemies of New Canaan, he sometimes showed quarter to those who crossed his family. Eventually, this new spirit would diminish the myth of the burned man in distant lands, a small price for the peace it brought to Joshua Graham. For years after the defeat of the White Legs, Daniel did his best to minister to the Sorrow's spiritual needs. Try as he might, he could not hold back the tribe's increasing militancy and reverence of Joshua Graham. Demoralized, he returned to his family and Dead Horse Point. His failures haunted him for the rest of his days. And with that, the courier walked out of the history of the tribes of Zion and back to the gathering storm of the Mojave Wasteland. <laughs>